my name is uh, Fred Gray. Uh, I've been a member of Web Paints going on now eight years. I can't believe it, it's that long. And uh, the, the, the reason why I'm a member of Web Paints is Paul Padovano is my best friend, and Paul introduced me to all you people. And I got to tell you, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. This this club is so special uh, to me because of the people in it and all of the all of the the the, the the really great feeling that comes from this group is the reason why I paint like this. Come on, I really mean that. I wouldn't, I would never be able to paint like this if it wasn't to come here. And I come here from a long, I come here from Western Suffolk. I come from West Babylon. I was born in uh, Bayside, Queens, and uh, I lived there for about, until I was around eight years old, and we moved out here in 1964. And to, I grew up in West Islip, and uh, you know what? It, what? When I listen to Chris and when I listen to Laurie and a, and a bunch of other people about, I was self-taught. All right, there's a lot of people that, that their bio is the same. I I never went to art school. They tried to send me there, and I was bored to tears. I knew all the cones. I knew all. Uh, Chris told me that she was an etch a sketch. I was an etch a sketch. Champion of Bayside Queens. It was the first video game. It was the first video game. It really was. Because you had to use your imagination. You had to be able to manipulate those two little knobs or whatever. And if and if you were if you weren't careful, you could erase that thing. Sometimes I didn't want to erase it, but that's what you had. You know, not like today. So uh, what happened was uh, I really took my drawing really for granted. I really wasn't really into art because I always doodled like Laurie, like a bunch of all of us that, that are self-taught. I always was doodling. I was pretty good in, in school. You know, I, my brother hated school. He was the jock. And I was the kid that stayed home and drew. And drew. You know? Yeah, and there's a lot of us, you know? And uh, I never was good at sports. Never, never decided. And they put me in Little League. I hated it. I was listening to music out in the outfield. I hated it. <laughs> but in West Islip, if you weren't into sports, you were nobody. That's the way, that's the way it was, like in a lot of Long Island places. Yeah. But uh, what happened was I went to college. I graduated from West Islip High School. I went to St. John's. I got, I got a degree in political science, which absolutely did me nothing. <laughs> All right? And uh, I went to work uh, in 1980 uh, for Pitney Bowes. And um, I, had, um, I became a diabetic. I, I became a diabetic when I was in my late teens. Almost, I was uh, I was 19 when I got in my first year in college. So I had to take a semester off because I was so sick. And they really didn't know that much about juvenile diabetes in adults at the time. So I actually went into a diabetic coma at the wheel of my car at 60 miles an hour on the Cross Island Parkway. I was coming home from uh, St. John's from a religion, religion test, which I did pretty well on, and I just passed out at the wheel, and I went across the divider. It was 1 o'clock in the afternoon. There was nobody on the road, and I slammed into a pole. The call was, you know, I, I, was, I didn't have a seatbelt on, believe it or not, and I was where the, the steering wheel was supposed to be. So I was over here, and the steering wheel was here. I was throwing me across. And... Uh, I ended up, uh, you know, in the hospital for a couple of days, and uh, they got me under control. But it was very difficult. It, 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 I don't know, you know anything about diabetes, but it's very tough when you've eaten whatever you wanted, and then yeah. you can't eat it. <laughs> you are telling me you can't drink, mm -hmm. uh, and I did. I, 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 I was one of these guys. Hey, I'm 20. I'm 20 years old. What, what's going to happen? You know. Yeah, and, uh, you know, yeah. yeah, when you feel that way, and. Uh, but going through college and then with Pitney Bowes, I, I had gotten, I got ill, I had gotten uh, what's called neuropathy, and uh, I was, I was, I got pretty sick. I was in the hospital for about three and a half months in Nassau County Medical Center, and that's where I learned to paint. This is an amazing story. The lady that taught me how to paint, she saw me drawing. I was so bored. I was, I was painting. I was drawing in the hospital. I was drawing this barn just out of my head because there was nothing really to look at. 
And I was drawing this blonde, and this woman came comes in the in the room, and she was looking at my drawings. She says, oh, "You can you can draw pretty well." She goes, "Did you ever have, have you ever thought about painting?" And I never ever thought about painting. I just thought, you know, I could draw. And uh, she came in with a palette and watercolor paper, and we sat down, and I painted the picture. I, I drew the picture again on watercolor paper, and it was my first. I don't have it. I actually gave it to her family. This woman died of cervical cancer, all right? But she passed along something to me that I'll always cherish because I never really would have thought about watercolor. And watercolor is, I'm like a duck to water with watercolor. I love it. It's so easy for me to do because there's no smell with the oils. There's no acrylic. People love acrylic, I understand. But for me, acrylic is ruining the brushes. From a watercolor's point of view, it's just too much. It's a pain. And for me, watercolor is very easy because all you need is water and paint, you know? And if you can draw, and even if you can't draw, watercolor is like that. So she taught me how to paint, and I, when I left the hospital, I found out I, we kept in touch, and she had died. And I, and I took that, that piece that we did together, and I wrote a little note, and uh, I got something back from a family about uh, the a couple of weeks later, and it was just such a gift that I got from somebody that I really never never met, just one time. Was she a patient? Yeah, yeah, she was a patient in the hospital, but she was there, and the, the, the painting made her feel really good. It was almost, it was a therapy for her, because she was so sick, and she never went on that she was that sick, you know? And what happened was, <clears throat> From then on, uh, I started to take lessons at the high school, and I joined a couple of, uh, I, I, I had gotten, uh, I'd gotten on disability because I, I couldn't drive. I, I, I was on this medication that made me very dizzy, and I was, really, I was really sick for a while. But the painting was something that I never really thought about, you know? And when I started to paint, because I could draw, I really, I really went after the watercolor. And uh, what happened then was uh, I started to I, I started to join a lot of art clubs. I joined the, the West Islip, the South Shore Art Association in West Islip. I think a couple of I think Chris uh, has been there, a couple of people yeah, a couple of people have been there. We used to paint there all the time. And uh, I started to go to go to shows and I started to go to art shows. And the first time I ever won an award, it was it was for best in show, and it was something that I put up. I didn't think it would do anything, and it was at the Higby Lane, the Higby Lane and West Islip show. They used to have a, a show in Higby Lane. Yeah, and I and I won first prize, and and I went and I joined Suburban Art League over on the North Shore. I didn't know about Sable. I didn't know this existed, you know, because it's so far away. So I went and I joined uh, the Suburban Art League. And I got uh, I got very into into the art over there on the North Shore. They have a lot of great artists over there. And in fact, I'm going to be in their show in June. And I went uh, over there and I became president of the Suburban Art League. I was so involved with the shows and everything that they had a really nice art show. They had it at the Beth Page uh, Clubhouse before they changed it. Beautiful art show, gorgeous. That was a good show. Really, yeah, beautiful, yeah. And the Golf Clubhouse. I'm sorry? The golf club. The golf, the golf yeah. club house, yeah. Yeah, they let us, before they changed everything in the state. Yeah. It's a beautiful day. So, yeah. And, uh, and I joined BACA. Now, BACA is uh, the Battle of Arts uh, for, it's a great organization. And I won a couple of best in shows in there. And, uh, and then, I, and then I, I, uh, I, was, I was always painting at the Brightwaters Library in West Iceland. All right? And that's where I met Paul, actually. Because Paul uh, came and uh, he really became really good friends. He's a great guy. And he's a really good friend, Paul, to me. And uh, I cherish his friendship very, very deeply. He's a really, he's a really, he's a really good person. And uh, we, we really got together and he, he told me about what paints. He was a member here. And I came here, and like I said, it was, it, it was, you feel such a feeling of <coughs> camaraderie here. You know, I think everyone feels it. Everyone feels that feeling, like we're all in this together, and yeah. no matter what you paint, you're an artist. And no one questions the 
you're an artist. That's the greatest thing about this place. No one ever says, you're not an artist. That's what I loved about this. Because even people who come here for the first time, encouragement is amazing. You never get that at other clubs. It's very rare. People are jealous of the guy that came in and all this yeah, stuff. This all backbiting. It really doesn't happen here. And that's what's so that's what I love about this place. We are not snobs. Yeah, no, not at all. We see it and we see yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, what happened was when I joined this and I, I felt really comfortable here and I and I was starting to really paint a lot of things. My watercolor got really well. I, I had taken a class with a guy, his name is Bill Deese. And uh, I, he was my teacher in, uh, I was in uh, Massapequa. I went to the Massapequa uh, night, night school for, for watercolor, and he was the guy. And then he taught at his house, and I started taking lessons with him. And he taught me depth, which a lot of my paintings were really flat in the beginning. He taught me how depth, he taught me color, he taught me compliments. I never knew what a compliment was. I, had no, I just grade everything down. You know, I never knew what, what a complimentary color was because I never went to art school. <laughs> so, you know, you don't, if you don't know this, you know, you just do, I was just doing what I was doing. And uh, he taught me that. And uh, I used to paint on Friday at Baca. And there are two people probably that were most influential in my art life than anybody else. Phyllis George and Judy Davidson. These two women are phenomenal portrait painters. Yeah. All right, they are. I, I still paint with Judy on uh, on Fridays with Carol and Alma and a bunch of people, and they took their time, and and then I started taking classes with Phyllis George at Baca, and then I, and Judy would come in and they would they would critique my stuff, but they would do it in a way that I could learn what they I could just suck up what they had in their brain. You know about about color because I never never learned it really, and uh, then uh, and then I like I said I came here and uh, and then the second year I was here I, I got very sick and I, I lost my leg and uh, unfortunately that was a that was a bad thing but you know what <laughs> this is the this is the greatest thing uh, story Carol and Chris came to visit me in the hospital. I was, in the, I was in rehab, and I was bored to tears. And they had asked me, you know, you want to get you some flowers? I don't, I don't like flowers to me. <laughs> they die, you know? So I had asked them, well, you know, if you're going to spend some money on flowers, just get me some art supplies. Because the flowers are going to die. <laughs> and I would still be without, without something to draw, you know? So what they did was, it was amazing, they came here and they, they went on, uh, on Joe, Chief Joe's or whatever, they got me, a, that's the thing I lost, the other thing, I can't believe I did that, I left it on top of my car and I've never seen it again. It's, oh, it's wow. yeah, it's, it's a, it's a water, water thing with all the, with all the paintbrushes, right, oh, wow. and they bought me a small, a small uh, a archer's block, alright, oh. and some, and some watercolors. And I started painting like crazy. I was painting things outside. I tried to paint a nurse, literally. And and it was and it was such a, a lift. And uh, the first Tuesday, I got home on a Monday night, and people will remember this. I came here. The second day I got out of the hospital, I had to come to a meeting because I was so bored, you know. And and I my leg was bandaged. It was yeah. it was bandaged. I had a stump that was bandaged. I didn't even have a leg. I was in a wheelchair. And I came to this meeting, and I wanted to come here just to thank everyone because they just were so amazing to me when I was there. And um, Annie. She's not here tonight. Annie was my nurse in ICU. And I didn't really know Annie, all right? And she drew me a picture and put it up on the bulletin board in ICU. And I still have that picture. And she was my, she was my ICU nurse. And what happened was, uh, I don't know, 
and gross people out, but when I, when I came back into ICU, they, they have a thing called zero form in, uh, in the hospital. And what it is, is, is a bandage with Vaseline. So when they take the bandages off, they don't stick. They didn't use zero form with me. So one of the doctors comes in and decides he's going to take the bandage off my leg. And if there was, I would have, I would have needed a moonshot to go through the ceiling. And they had to put, they had to stick 20 milligrams or whatever it was. I don't know how much it was of morphine. Wow. Just, to, just, to, yeah. And Nanny was there. She was stroking my head, and I always love her for that because it was someone that knew me, and uh, you know, this is about my life. But this is like the emotional stuff that that's att attached to this place for me. Because it, it just is such a, uh, there's so much good coming out of this place. And people don't realize how good this place is. Because I've been to other art, art, art groups, and this is, they don't have anything like we have. No. They really don't. They really don't. And uh, so what happened was, I, I don't want to get too crazy with that, but I lost my leg. And then, and then I, I came to the meetings, and I, I finally, I was using the wheelchair. And people were helping me in with my stuff, and Barbara and Chris, and they're carrying stuff in all the time. Freddie, you, you got to tell them about the dances that you go to. Yeah, yeah. I invite you to, to a dance. Yeah, yeah to the dance. You'll be out on the dance floor. In the wheelchair. In the wheelchair. Because yeah. I love music. And I was dancing with the he music. He's his mother and his father. Yeah, we're, we're dancing yeah, with the music. Yeah, because it was fun. And, 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 I, and I was introduced to Mario. And, and to Terry and Fran and Carol and the, we were all, you know, and I got my parents and they, and my dad died about f five years ago. But that was, he had such a great time at that, at that, at that with those dances. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and you know what, this isn't as bad as it, as it seems. You know what, there are people that are blind. There are people that can't walk, that have no legs. There are guys coming home from... You know what? I, I really believe that in, that in 10 years, they're going to be able to grow me a leg. Mm -hmm. All right? They probably will. Because, or they're going to have something so sophisticated that this is really... I, I look at this as an interruption, really. You know, it's not really anything really in that major. You know, it, I can walk. I can do this. I can't do some of the things I can't do. But that's life. You know? You go to swimming, too. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, you know, but... But anyway, getting back to the to the to the paintings, this is the first watercolor I really ever framed, and you can see it's very yeah, it's very monochromatic. But you know what? I was experimenting with the sky, and you know, it's, you know, and, and the depth one. I tried to do the to do the depth thing with the dark and then the light. Yeah, yeah. No, it's still and, a nice painting frame. Yeah. Very beautiful. Yeah, yeah. very yeah. nice. So where did you get the subject for that? Yeah. It, you know what? And this, this, I just, I looked through a book. Yeah. You know, and I just, I just looked at it, and I changed a little bit of it. It was like it's a, this is in England. Yeah. This is an English castle. Yeah. In, in England, yeah. You know. Well, that's why you need to name the Ferris wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like all the night. And th this one, people have seen. This is actually was done about uh, 16 years ago. Yeah. This is a uh, painting for my. Uh, I did for my uh, my nephew Justin. And I, my, I did it for my sister. It was, a, it was actually a, a gift, a, a, a shower gift, you know, because, nice. you know, and they put it, he had it in his room. He wants to know where the picture went. <laughs> so you're not getting it back. <laughs> he, he had it sent out of his room because it's too baby, but now he wants it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he was 12, he liked the teddy bears. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, exactly. Good for you. This is a painting of Peru, and uh, it, it's, a, it's a collage, and I'm not really good at people, all right, I really, and, and what I did was, this comes right out of National Geographic, this face, yeah. now you know what's amazing about this face, this face could be Mongolian, how, look at how Asian that face yeah. looks. You know, that's, that's where her, her ancestors came from, yeah. Asia. Yeah. yeah, the colors. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a, the Indians, I mean, they call them Indians, they're Amerasians. Yeah, you know? right. you know? And this is really the, the four or five parts of Peru. This is the Andes, <laughs> this is uh, the rainforest, uh, the, you know, all the different areas. And 
I just, I just had, and I, and I did all the app, the, the Aztec things going around. Yeah. This is what I, I love detail. But I, you I, painted I, in that too. Yeah. That. Oh, yes. that's, yeah. that's why it's a collage, yeah. otherwise it wouldn't yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look, the this is this is the mountain climbers going yeah, down. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's right on where the you know where the, what do you call it comes down. I tried to put it together where it was, uh, you know, and it was something that I I just never did before. And I, and I wanted to see what it would look like, you know? It's very well done. And, and, it has and the one thing that I love to do is color. Mm -hmm. I love color. That bird has the color you're looking yeah, for. I love color. I just love putting color together on, you know, different things, you know? And this, 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 these are the, this is a painting I did of my other nephew. And they were in Hawaii when Iniki was the hurricane, was, was there. And this is because I can't do faces at the time. I just did it from the back. <laughs> but you know what? He, he's, he's 23 now. He just got back from uh, like six months in Europe. He, he was, uh, he was teaching, at, uh, teaching English at a French chateau for these people. Yeah. He stayed there all, all you know, it's amazing. And he's, he's got a double major in philosophy and, uh, and drama. He's an amazing kid. And his name is Eric. And this was the, I was started with the water stuff going around. I don't know if people see it. They can yeah, look that's, at it. Right. that's where I started with the, which is something you don't see a lot of watercolors do. You don't see a lot of watercolorists do. The, the, the water's going around. It doesn't have any protection on it for you? No, I, you know what? It, it's, it's in my mother's room, and I didn't want to put, you know. Yeah, yeah. Usually you have to put glass or, or, or some sort of, uh, what do you call it, around it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, plexiglass, you know. Now this is a painting, uh, everyone knows about the boats. I, I never, ever drew a boat, let alone painted a boat, ever in my life. And I went, I was in this, I was in this gallery on the North Shore, and they just, they just decided, I just decided, well, uh, I, I brought this painting in with Paul, right, remember? There was a painting of Costa Rica, I, I, I don't have an apple, she bought it, it was the first painting she bought. And she was, uh, it was, it was a painting of Costa Rica, and I put a little sailboat in the back, in the background. And she loved it so much, she bought 29 others. <laughs> and, you know, she doesn't buy them anymore because she has probably enough to fill three houses. But she put them in her husband's, uh, she put them in her husband's, uh, his business. Yeah, business. Yeah, and uh, this was this is a painting of uh, this is a painting of Lugano in Switzerland. Yeah. You know, oh, it's really and different. you know the, this is these are the Alps in back. Yes. And Lugano is in the southern part of Switzerland. It's in the Romash. They speak Romash. They speak a Rom Italian Italian. Uh, you, you know what I'm yes. talking about. And uh, these were these were paintings, and and I just love the. I mean, I love architecture. And the boats have such unbelievably beautiful architecture to them. You know, they're, they're triangles and they're, you know, there's all things, a lot going on. And the water has so much, you know, so much, you know, movement to it, you know. And if you look, this is, this is a guy in back here. That's the guy doing the, driving the boat right there. That guy right there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this, is, this is one of the ones she didn't buy. <laughs> the boat is tacking. Yes. Tax back and forth. Right. America's Cup. This woman is an America's Cup fanatic. That's and the reason why she bought my paintings is because of the rigging. I do all the correct rigging. All right. She could never find anyone who could do rigging. Because you know what people would do? They do a boat, yeah. do a sailboat, yeah, so a couple of sails, and rigging here, rigging here. That was it. Yeah. She wanted realism because that's what she does. That's what they do. They know where everything goes, and she said to me, "I've never seen anyone who could could do the rig the rigging like you do." I said, "I bought a, I bought a couple of sail magazines, yeah. and if you look where everything goes, it's logical on, on a sailboat. Mm -hmm. It is, you know, it, it is what it, do, it does. It, it's a lot to do. more uh, to, to that painting that you point than the rigging. Yeah. No, no, but that's what that's what, very dramatic. No, but long. you know what? The thing that she was really into was the fact that the boat 
was anatomically correct. That's what, that's what she loved, and the, and the fact that it was in a painting made it even better. Yeah, it's very uh, dramatic. Painting. Yeah. Almost looks like an album piece. Well, there's a lot of action. How did you, uh, how did you do the uh, uh, perspective on yeah, that? Yeah, well, uh, how did you go about that one too? You know what it is? Everyone knows this. I see perspective in my head. I, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, uh, everyone remembers the Long Island Press. Yes. Long Island Press. Long Island Press. Before computers, they had uh, renderings of homes in the back, and I used to go through the architectural portraits of those things that they had in the real estate section on Sunday. I used to save them, and they were the most unbelievable pictures of homes. And that's how I taught myself perspective. Wow. All right, I would copy those pictures. And after a while, I knew exactly where all the lines went. Yeah. You know, I, I originally did the lines, but after a while, I, I just know where, they, where, where they're going to go. You know, and that's what helped me with, with the paint, with the drawings that I do. Because the perspective I see, you know, in my head. Yeah. I don't have to do all the, you know, all that stuff. This painting, yeah, I got like right. this is the newest one I, I just finished. Um, this is, uh, you saw this without the frame. Uh, this is, uh, this is, uh, 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 I guess other painting? What? Uh, put that against the wall, that other one. Yeah. Well, put that on the thing. Yeah, put this on the thing. That's a good idea. Yeah, put it on the thing. You can all see it. Yeah. Good idea. Could you take the photographs and then work from that, or did you? Well, this is actually, the, the, the photograph I had was of the boat. But, like, like, Lori and everybody else, I don't. Do it. I put it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. right. And what I did was, I went on the internet and I found a, a picture of the bridge. Oh. All right. And it, and then I, I actually did this. The the, the sky is a, is my own, my own. I made up the sky. Mm -hmm. This is a sunset. Mm -hmm. And if in, in reality, this is. This is never going to happen in Great South Bay. Yeah. <laughs> never. You'll never see this happen in Great South Bay because no. it's Actually, it's too it's, it's too. Well, but very rarely. What? It has happened, but very rarely. Very rarely. But I, I'm saying that where yeah. this is, where this is in Great South Bay, it's too it's too shallow really for this to happen. But you know, it's it's a painting and it's a fantasy. You know, it does, even though I, it's a realistic painting, it doesn't have to be real. What? Freddie, those figures there. I mean, I don't think yeah. I can paint them as good as that. Yeah. Somebody yeah. doesn't paint figures. And I don't, I don't really you don't pride you myself on dark figures, believe me. I think you, know? you did a great job. But well, you know what, it's the drawing. If you concentrate on the drawing and you get, if you can draw, you can draw people. But it's just I'm not good at faces. You know, I can draw the bodies, but the faces aren't that great. But what this is, what this is, is this, these are all little vignettes of Cap Tree all, all around, Oak Beach. Where they're finding the bodies, some of the that's, that's where they are. This is, a, this is the Fire Island Lighthouse. You know, this is a this is a little girl and her father. All right, I couldn't not enough room for the head and whatever. But just it's just a you know kid at the beach with with, with a dad just holding on. And I did a starfish, and this is the bridge, and this is this is it's it's just a local it's just a local piece. You know that I that I really on the painting, right? At the beginning, you painted the edge. Yeah, yeah. You know what I do? I actually draw everything first. I draw everything first. There's everything that's drawn in pencil first, because otherwise I'm gonna I'm gonna make an error. I you know, and I made a little error here too. This is really too high. Walter mentioned that, and he's right. But you know what? I don't think people will see it because the bridge really should be a little bit lower. It's it's a little too high, but. You know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Freddie, you Freddy, Freddy, watch behind you. Yeah. Does so anybody have a lot of questions? It's 300 pound paper. Yeah. I buy watercolor paper by the roll. Oh. Yeah. All right. They they sell arches is probably the best watercolor paper there is. Yeah, 500. And yeah, and I buy 30 feet of paper. Wow. It's 10 yards of paper. It's amazing. It's four and a half yeah. feet wide, yeah. and it comes in a roll. And you know what? The, I paint a lot of big stuff, but all you really have to do is just get the the sizing out of it, and I put it in the shower, I run the, and it just flattens right out, you know. But it's great paper, and you can cut it to size. There's so many people that buy sheets of watercolor paper, beautiful sheets, and they cut them up, 
if you buy, if this cost me $119 mm. for 30 feet of paper, wow. I mean, it's, yeah. it's really, if you have one of those, it really pays to, 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 to buy. Freddy, how wide is it? It's four and a half, it's like this wide. It's this wide. wide. That it's yeah. wide. And, you know, it's, and it's what amazing. Weight do you buy? It's, 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 it's actually not 300, it's 270, 275. It's, it's, but you know what? It, 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 it's enough. 140 is too. Is, watercolor paper comes in, in 90, 90 pound, 140 pound, and 300 pound. 300 pound, they call it elephant paper. It's very, very thick. And, but the problem is, it soaks up water tremendously. So you don't want to be cutting this stuff up. It's, very, it's like $25 a sheet. It's not cheap. So you have 500 pounds. Also. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Fred, I have some. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Fred, what kind of watercolor uh, paints do you use? Well, I use well, I use watercolor. And the ink is separate. What I you don't believe it or not, I use India ink pens for the rigging. India ink pens. They will not. Um, they will not bleed, because right, they're waterproof. Right. And I use Da Vinci watercolor. Da Vinci makes a great watercolor. It's beautiful, beautiful colors, you know. And my palette, you see my palette, it's very messy. But you know what I do? I use, the, the, the greatest thing about watercolor is, even if it's on, I, I use like a butcher block, a butcher's, butcher's block, butcher tray. 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 And you, you don't ever erase that. Because those are the colors I use in most of my paintings. So you can reanimate the watercolor just with the water. So you, you, I, I've, had, I've had paint. Up for almost 10 or 12 years, I never bought paint. You know, if you keep it in a plastic bag, just like the oils, you keep it in a plastic plastic bag, and you don't let the air get into it, it's going to stay forever. And even if the air does get to it, I take a razor blade, you open up the thing, and you reanimate it. You know, that's the greatest, the greatest thing. It's a very cheap way to paint. It doesn't, doesn't cost you. Initially, it costs you a lot of money. But if you buy good paints, they'll, they'll stay forever. You know? Any other questions? Do they ever fade, the watercolors? No, they really don't. You, you know what? Um, if you use really good paper and you, uh, and you, keep, the, you keep them covered, th th this one, I really, should have, uh, I really should have some glass on this. Yeah, th the thing is, watercolor paper is a fungus. And if you don't, if you don't use uh, really good watercolor paper and you don't put glass on it, it will disintegrate over time, but if you keep if you keep like plexi or whatever, they 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 won't fade. They'll last a long time. Yeah. You know. Could you explain your uh, uh, what you have the painting surrounded with? All those little yeah. The, the, well, this is the cap tree and this is the cap tree boat basin. This is just really a, a just a just a sunset that I did with the. You and know, you with paint the that color. first, right? Yeah. This is the Fire Island Lighthouse. All right. Yeah. Over here, this is Oak Beach. Again, this is this could be Jones Beach, or it could be any of the any of the South Shore. Again, I did this with the bird, just like the sunset, you know. And this this is the shore over here also. And uh, again, this is the beach, and this is the bridge going over to Robert Moses State Park. That that single bridge. These are, these are double bridges. They didn't have enough money to do the other one, so you know. And this is like a starfish. This is the inlet. And this is the uh, this is the Great South Bay, looking out at the Great South Bay, and they, and it's all interconnected. I try to the the one thing I like to do when I do the, the borders, I want to I want to interconnect it with the painting, so people feel like they're not removed, yeah. you know. Yeah. And people will look in there like they're like this, still, you know. Yeah, well, it's you know? Yeah. Do that. Yeah. It's an unusual thing because yeah. there's not a lot of artists to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. Fred, uh, Every time I see you when you're painting here on Tuesday night, you always have a little tiny brush. When, what do you do your sky and your water with? A larger brush? Yeah. Yeah. When you do watercolor, you, you do it. You, you do it wet on wet. You, you, you really. Then you can see there's so many. They call them washes. It's very similar to oil when you do when you do uh, glaze. you know glaze. when you when you glaze in oil. It's the same thing in watercolor. The thing about watercolor is when you do watercolor. The bottom has to be very, very light. You have to do light to dark. It's the opposite of oil. Oil is dark to light. Mm -hmm. All right. And when you do the washes, watercolor is reflective. So the more washes you do, the deeper the color. You get a really beautiful deep color. 
you know, here with the yellows. And these oranges are, are just a reflection. They're a deeper, darker color of the yellow. And, you know, then you, then you go into the purples. And this is a, this is a complement of the yellow, the, the yellow, purple, yeah. you know. And that's what makes the painting sing. That's, that's another thing that uh, Phyllis and, and Judy taught me. It says, when you do complementary colors on a painting, the painting sings because the colors, the right, right, right. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they just pop them. off each other. Yeah, they complement each other. Yeah, they yeah. complement. They sing. It sings yes. you, you, because your, your eye, what, when you look at yellow and purple, there's purple and yellow and yellow and purple. There's red and green and green and red That's right. in, the, in the spectrum. And your, your eye is taught to see that. You know, so that's... Fred, what is it that you do to keep it from lifting when you do the sky? That oh, many? well, you know what I do? I, I have a great friend. His, his name is Parthenon Framing. His name is Fody. He, and what's amazing about Fody is, first time I ever went there, when I, when I went with my leg, he gives me such a great discount on, on my framing. All right, because he knows I, I'm out, you know, I'm on disability, I'm on very limited income. So he frames stuff for me. He cut this, I had this, this frame, and he cut this down for me. This painting, this frame cost me 60 bucks. Because he, he cut it down, and he, he gave me the glass, and the, 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 the thing. He just is that kind of a guy. Yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, and I, I go to him, and I tell everyone about it. Everybody besides Walter, I know Walter frames, but this guy is also amazing. And he's no, but I was talking about the sky. Yeah. You, you said you do so many layers. Right. And you do wet on wet. So what prevents it from lifting? Oh, yeah. well, well, what, you have, what you have to do is there's three types of watercolor of, a, of attempting wood. There's dry brush, which is what this is. That's what I thought you did dry right. no, brush. No, no, no. There's dry brush. There's a mid brush where once the, once the painting is semi-dry, semi you can take a, you can do a streak that won't, that will not bleed, wow. and if it's just a little bit wetter, you can get one side of it to bleed and the other side to stay. That's what happened here. The, I, mean, I also use, uh, I also use a uh, permanent white. I, I don't like really to uh, leave white on the paper because it's just too con. It's just this pain in the neck. I can get the same thing, and that's a no-no with. A lot of traditional yeah. watercolor yeah. people, yeah. Yeah. they hate that. No yeah. 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 And but you know, the water the same way? Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I believe? I believe if it works for the painting, yeah. it doesn't matter. All the rules are out there. Yeah, there's no rules anymore. I don't think they hold to that anymore. Wow, no. you know, the watercolor society yeah. does. Yeah. You put this in there, they won't take it. They won't accept it. They won't take it. They're like, no, wait, wait, Freddie, I went to the watercolor society shows. They have gouache and something. Gua but gouache, gouache well, is different. The gouache is it's different than gouache. watercolor. They yeah, don't look gouache at Gouache is almost what you're using. Yeah, but gua well, all gouache is is, uh, is, uh, is permanent, I is, saw is solid it. watercolor. It's so opaque. Space. Yeah, it's opaque, solid, man. Yeah, it's this, this is not opaque. This is transparent. Yeah. I'm thinking but, of the other guy's name. I can't. Winslow Homer. Yeah. He used he used gouache in his stuff. Yeah, but but well, that's gouache. Yeah. Well, this is this is gauche. yeah. This is that's yeah. Not yeah. yeah. But yeah, isn't that gouache what you use? Yeah. No. no. Chinese well, white. No, no, it's not Chinese white. It's gouache. It's not. It's gouache. It's gouache. It's white gouache. It's white well, gouache. See, this right here is white gouache. Yes. Yeah, so uh, gouache. You know. Fred. Yeah. When you say they want to take that. They would recognize that that white. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. You it's all technical stuff. They're, they're purists. The they're purists, and that's yeah. fine. But I think they take that now. If you want to be a purist, that's no, fine. If he's going to be judged but there is a member of the yeah, watercolor society. This is a watercolor society. The national, he will not it's like auto buying. When you join auto buying, you join the, the, the yeah. you know with, with birds, and you know you're you're, you're painting birds, and it has to be a certain. Yeah, the they're, they're, they're very you know they're, very technical. Yeah, that's you very technical. You know, which I understand. But you know what? People are getting away from that. They're, they're doing the painting, what they, want what they want to do, and if it makes the painting better, you know, that's, so what, that's what it does. Is the wave all gouache also? The, the, the wave, wave is gouache, yes. I could never leave the white there. It would be insane. You would never be, you would never be able to get that. Even in the other painting, the, the other, the other, this, this right here, you would never be able to get that 
that feeling of white water. Yeah. You know, Freddie. Okay. Okay. Anybody have questions? No. Anybody? Does anybody have any more questions? Freddie, did you ever sail? I'm sorry. Have you ever been on a sailboat? Yeah. <laughs> Never, never in my life. I've never been a sailboat. What? You ever been a teacher? No. Yeah, I, you know what? It's too complicated. I draw too detailed. too detailed for people to really, you really have to draw like this to paint like this. Yeah, but you you taught us only a few things, and you're so good at explaining. You open your eyes to people that they can understand what you're doing. That's a good teacher. Yeah. Well, but yeah, but you really to pay, to get this kind of, of effect. No, not that. You know, you can teach. Yeah. You really I, 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 you know what? I don't have yeah. enough background to do that. Yeah, you're really being a professional. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Very good. Very good. Thank you.